I thought I would try and experiment and see how the video looked with the camera on its lowest setting. This is 480 by 270, 30 frames per second, 1 megabit. This is the condenser fan motor out of the refrigerator here at the house. And this is the condenser is the one under the refrigerator that releases the heat. And I got a call the other night, I was out of town that the sounded like uh, something had gotten sucked into the fan and it was making a horrible amount of noise and uh, when I got back I noticed that some of the things in the freezer section were not as hard as they should have been which indicates that the thing was warming up I also heard the compressor cycling and then I noticed how hot it was I pulled this out and I have cleaned it all up because it was quite a bit dirtier but there's supposed to be a rubber washer that goes in between here and here and you can kind of see maybe where that was and the purpose of that washer it's about I don't know uh, a millimeter couple millimeters thick it's not super thick but the the purpose of that rubber washer is to act as a pad, uh, a spacer, because you see this almost rubs on the motor, and also a friction, like a friction grommet, so that the fan makes good uh, bites onto the motor, because there is no, it's just completely smooth all the way around. There is no, nothing there to keep it from you know you can see it just spins right on there so instead of going to the parts house I'm gonna just make one out of a piece of heater hose it's not that critical also on these motors you can oil these motors I know they they say that they're sealed for life well in the in the back of this thing this is if you pull this cap off this is this is a big felt pad the whole inside of this is a big felt pad and you can re-soak that with oil and get a lot more miles out of these I don't even pull it off what I do is I just drill a hole in it you see that hole right there because the way it sits in the freezer is like this so you want to drill the hole at the top so I just drill a hole in it and then I can fill it with oil so I will re-oil it before I put it back together. Alright, what I've done is I've just taken a piece of standard heater hose and I drilled a hole through it with a quarter inch drill bit and then I just cut it with the scissors to fit over here and now I'll just screw it down. It's not like there's a lot of torque or anything on this. It just needs some padding and some friction. Domestic refrigerators are usually pretty easy to fix. There's only a few things that go wrong with them. Uh, it's usually the de in the defrost circuit, either the defrost timer or the heating element in the evaporator goes open or there's some other little uh, temperature cutoffs and stuff that can go bad probably the biggest problem with them is that the owners don't get under there and clean the condensers out and of course they're in a pretty filthy environment the kitchen floor where people are walking in front of it and stirring up dust and sweeping the floor not realize that it's sucking uh, the dirt in there so you really need to get under there and clean the, the condenser out depending on the level of dirt or whatever. If you have a dog, of course, it's going to really get plugged up quick. But uh, you need to clean it out at least probably quarterly. And when they get dirty, you know, of course, it can't get rid of the heat, so it just runs and runs and runs and runs up the electric bill. So, um, yeah, uh, forced air condensers under a domestic refrigerator in the kitchen was never a good idea, in my opinion. It's tough to get in here but this is the fan and it's been oiled and it's all back in 
and that's the condenser coil down there and I just cleaned it with an air compressor and vacuum and it's also real important to have this this cardboard back on because that's what directs the air and if you just take that and throw it away because it's dirty and rotten then the thing is not going to work well at all dust bunnies blowing around.